Well, since I received so much love from my series talking about the biggest problems in every Dragon Ball saga, you guys gave me an idea. Now, I'm going to talk about what I think the biggest strengths are in every Dragon Ball saga. And just like I did last time, I'm going to start with Dragon Ball Z. Now, I think the Saiyan Saga is one of the two best sagas in Dragon Ball history and executes at a high level in many aspects. So in saying that, I also believe that there are many strengths in the Saiyan Saga as well. You have the excellent writing for Vegeta, the beautiful introduction of Raditz, and the absolute masterpiece that is the Goku and Vegeta fight. But I think the biggest strength in the Saiyan Saga is Nappa's time in the story. Now, I know for some, that answer may sound a little crazy, but let me explain. There are a couple major points I considered when choosing Nappa as the biggest strength of the Saiyan Saga. The first is that Nappa's character in early Dragon Ball Z thrives on the sharp contrast between his brutish, reckless nature and Vegeta's composed, calculating demeanor. While Vegeta embodies strategic ruthlessness, Nappa is pure, unfiltered aggression. He craves destruction and enjoys the chaos, which makes him a looming physical threat but also a liability. This dynamic serves to amplify Vegeta's authority as the audience quickly sees Vegeta's dominance not just in power, but in intellect, often reprimanding Nappa for his impatience and recklessness. Nappa's overwhelming reliance on brute force without forethought highlights Vegeta's methodical approach, reinforcing Vegeta's superiority in both skill and leadership. This time in the story was not only beneficial for Nappa, but it helped to build Vegeta's character without him actually having to do anything. But Nappa excelled as the main antagonist in early Dragon Ball Z despite the looming presence of a stronger figure in Vegeta. By effortlessly defeating Tien, Chaozu, and even Piccolo, Nappa set a grim tone, making it clear that no one stood a chance against him, not Krillin, and not Gohan who at a certain point were the only Z fighters left. This relentless onslaught created a sense of helplessness that kept the tension high as the remaining fighters were only barely surviving. Nappa's ability to hold the narrative weight and carry the role of the main antagonist despite Vegeta's eventual reveal as a greater threat solidified him as a force to be reckoned with and an unforgettable part of Dragon Ball Z's intense buildup. But to me, the most important aspect is that Nappa's presence in Dragon Ball Z deepened the growing understanding of what we thought him meant to be a Saiyan, expanding on the brutal and warrior-driven culture introduced by Raditz. While Raditz first revealed the pride and ruthlessness of the Saiyan race, Nappa took it a step further embodying their savage nature, thirst for combat, and disdain for weakness. This stood in stark contrast to Goku who, despite being a Saiyan by birth, had adopted Earth's values of compassion, friendship, and self-improvement. Nappa's arrival furthered the tension between Goku's life choices and his Saiyan heritage, adding layers to the storyline as Goku faced not just a physical threat, but the ideological challenge of what it truly meant to be a Saiyan. Now the Frieza saga is the best saga in all of Dragon Ball. All of it. There are countless memorable moments and the writing for Dragon Ball during this period was at its best. And I think the biggest strength of this saga was the multiple storylines. Part of the reason why the Frieza saga is so good is because of how dynamic it is. From the time Gohan and Krillin arrive on Namek up until the Z fighters meeting Frieza is what I call the chaos. It masterfully juggles multiple storylines, all building tension and excitement for this moment here. It's hard to even choose which storyline was the main one for this section. While Goku's quest to become stronger wasn't seen the most, without it, the entire saga goes much differently. Then you have the search for the Dragon Balls which has three perspectives, Vegeta's, Gohan and Krillin, and Frieza's. Vegeta, driven by his ambition to surpass Frieza and claim ultimate power, engages in a tactical and ruthless hunt for the Dragon Balls. Gohan and Krillin on the other hand are underdogs. They're trying to survive and protect themselves while seeking the Dragon Balls to resurrect the Z Fighters. Meanwhile, Frieza's pursuit is fueled by his desire for immortality, making him the most terrifying force in the race. Each decision built suspense. The looming threat of Frieza's overwhelming power hanging over everyone made every moment feel critical in the larger battle for the Dragon Balls. There's also the approaching extinction of the Namekian race, the Ginyu Force, it was so much. And again, every character's decisions had consequences on the story. Each storyline intertwined seamlessly. The saga balances intense action, emotional stakes, and unexpected alliances all while maintaining the constant dread of Frieza's unmatched power. This multi-layer storytelling kept viewers hooked as every subplot felt vital to the climactic showdown making the final fight against Frieza the pinnacle of tension and narrative depth in the series. Okay, so here's the thing. I like the Cell Saga, but it always loses me a little bit with the whole Cell Revival moment. Like we just went through all this intense buildup, insane fights, Goku's heartfelt sacrifice and then boom, Cell pulls a surprise, I'm back card out of nowhere. 
Like I get it. Dragon Ball loves its dramatic comebacks, but this one just felt like it stretched the tension out a little too far. Gohan finally has his moment, unleashing his full potential and then sells like, nah, I'm not done yet. And for me, that undercuts that awesome payoff and drags the whole thing out. It's like getting to the perfect ending of a movie and then the villain stands back up just to throw another punch. But that's not me saying that the Cell saga wasn't really fun at times. That's not me saying that the entirety of this saga wasn't well written. Because I believe that the Cell saga's biggest strength is that it closes so many important character arcs really, really well. Which is why I've previously said, I do think Dragon Ball Z should have ended earlier than this, but if it ended after Goku's sacrifice, I would have loved it. If you were to make a list of the five most important characters by the end of the Cell Saga, what would it look like? Let me know in the comments. For me, it's Gohan, Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, and Future Trunks. We saw Gohan go from a timid and scared little boy with boundless potential to a confident fighter who stepped out of his father's shadow and saved the world by realizing his potential. For almost a decade, fans watched Goku grow from a child to a grown man. Goku went through countless battles in the pursuit of either protecting his friends or pushing himself. Many of his most important enemies ended up becoming allies because of how strong his personality was, and at the end of his life, he chose to save his friends one last time because he knew that another version of him would be there in his place. Now Vegeta is in a slightly different situation. In the Cell Saga, we begin to see Vegeta's maturation in his care for others. For the present version of the character, Trunks was too young and it seemed like Vegeta was an absent father. But Vegeta argued with Future Trunks, he trained with Future Trunks, and he also fought against Future Trunks. And Vegeta acknowledging his son against Semi-Perfect Cell was the first time Vegeta publicly showed pride in any one person outside of himself. However, Vegeta also lost Future Trunks. And that was the first time Vegeta threw caution to the wind because of another person he loved. That's growth, and I want you guys to stay with me because this next take is one I haven't heard before. Throughout the Cell Saga, Vegeta gets humbled at least three times in combat. Once against 18, then against Cell, and against Cell again. But Vegeta's most humbling moment in the saga is one that doesn't happen in combat. After Gohan defeats Cell and Goku dies, Vegeta vows to never fight again. And I think it's one of the most underrated moments of growth in Dragon Ball. See, this is how I view it. At a certain point, and I really want to say it was after Vegeta became a Super Saiyan, Goku had become his only real motivation. Vegeta's a Saiyan, I know, they like to fight, but his driving force was Goku, he had to catch him. And even though some could see it as childish, I see it as growth. Because at this point, Vegeta doesn't want to fight and kill just for the fun of it. If Goku died against Frieza, I believe Vegeta would have kept going around the galaxy fighting and killing the way he was before ever meeting Goku. But after the Cell Saga, Vegeta is okay with just training and living out the rest of his days. This wouldn't have been as memorable as the Buu Saga, but it does lead to a more interesting close to his character. For Piccolo, his story closes because he sees his pupil realize his full power on top of becoming whole again. If that's not a sufficient end to his story, then I don't know what is. And then Future Trunks. Future Trunks was a character introduced with a lot of confidence and assurance, but the more we saw the character, the more clear it was that he was just a child fighting a battle he couldn't win. Trunks came back to the past to change the future, and if you've watched enough Dragon Ball, then you know that actions changed in the past do not alter what's already happened in the future. That's a different timeline. Yet, Trunks did change the future. What he went through in the past made him a much stronger, knowledgeable, and more decisive character. And when he went back to his time, he saved the world. He found what he was looking for without even trying. And again, that's a great close to his character. I wish that Dragon Ball Z ended after this saga because of how effectively it closes so many stories. But there is the Buu Saga, I had to talk about it. The Buu Saga has many weaknesses, but I'm not gonna harp on those. The Buu Saga's greatest strength is Goku's spirit bomb or really just the ending. Goku's use of the spirit bomb to defeat Kid Buu stands as the defining moment of the Buu saga and a fitting conclusion to the original run of Dragon Ball. The spirit bomb itself had been a symbol of hope throughout the series, representing the combined efforts of all living beings against overwhelming evil. Ending this saga with this technique not only brought an epic finality to the battle, but also reflected the core message of the series, that the universe's greatest threats could be overcome through collective strength. In a way, this moment encapsulated everything Dragon Ball had built towards, with Goku channeling the energy of his allies and even the people he had protected to deliver the finishing blow. It was the ultimate culmination of his journey as a fighter who always believed in the power of unity. 
But beyond its spectacle, the Spear Bomb's role in the finale is symbolic of how Goku operated from the very beginning of Dragon Ball. Goku never saw himself as a lone warrior, but always a part of something larger depending on his friends, family, and rivals to push him beyond his limits. Whether it was training with Krillin as a child or fusing with Vegeta in the Buu Saga, Goku's reliance on teamwork and trust in others was central to his character, always. It's a testament to the idea that no victory in Dragon Ball was ever truly achieved alone, making this conclusion as thematically rich as it was action-packed. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. This is Big Tune and thanks for watching. Y'all have a good one.